Good afternoon, Andrew. How are you? I'm good.
heck is everybody? Still missing two people. Anyone seen Ben? Ben's here. Yeah, he was definitely in classes today and he was just texting us, so I'll text him real quick. And I haven't seen Soham all day. Okay. I saw Soham earlier. He's in my it wasn't here last block, though. Yeah. There's Ben. Well, they haven't marked the Madison yet. Steven, did you skip class today? Somebody marked you absent. I have to go take my senior portrait. Yeah. Oh. How does that work? You just go to the auditorium. Oh, you actually go to the building? Yeah. Oh. Well, that's cool. All right, people. Um, homework. What happened? Not bad. I only got like a couple people sending me pictures. Easy. Oh, oh we we're supposed to send you pictures? pictures? Oh, right. Like, you know, like oh. turning stuff in. Oh. Duh. <laughs> Come on. Do you want us to email that to you or do we do it on? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Email it to me. Okay. Um, take a picture, email, make sure that the, they're legible. I think we have this conversation. Like the pictures should be legible and not like icon size and, you know, all that. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Did everyone do it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Are there any of them? Well, hold on. Let's just go through them. Um, I don't know if you can actually read this or not, but hold on. If I zoom out too far, you're never going to be able to read it. Um, Those are the first four. Just want to make sure we're all cool on those four before I show you the other four. Which one of those was the nastiest of the four? Or the weirdest of the four? Probably 43. Yeah. Now, just for clarity, you cannot break up a sum in an, inside a log. You can break up multiplication and division, but you can't break up a, an addition. Any other questions, issues, moans, whines, or complaints? For 42, is the X supposed to be in absolute value symbols too? Um, yeah, and uh, so the que that's a good is a good point there. So the question always is, should I put bars on it or not? And the thing you have to think about is, can that thing, whatever's inside, be a negative? And that's the deal. You can't take the log of a negative number. So, like for example, in number of uh, in number forty, 
x squared plus one is always positive because the square is always positive and you're adding one to it. So it's always going to be greater than zero. And that's the other thing. You can't have zero either. It has to be greater than zero. And so therefore you don't need the bars. But anything that could be a negative, like X, that's that bars on it. All right. The next ones. Fifty five was kind of weird because yet at least I did this with uh, two substitutions. Theoretically, you could have done it with one, but it was just a lot uglier to do it with only one. Can you do 53? Yeah, sure. Okay. Anybody else want me to pull out anything? Could you do um, 55 as well? Sure. Could you do 54 too? Okay, these three? Okay. Can you do 52 as well? Okay, I'll do the monthly as well. That's right. Okay. Um, I'm gonna, all right, so I can probably do this on the sideways. Okay, so 52. I'm just going to do them in order, okay? So I got um, 9 plus the natural log of x squared all over x dx. So remember, you're always looking for a function and its derivative. And since the derivative of the natural log is just 1 over x, that tells me I've got my u sub going here. And so uh, my u is the natural log of x. But if I just do that and make this my, my u, then I'm not dealing with my plus 9. You see, so if I, if I went down this the wrong way, um, you would wind up, because your du would be 1 over x dx. So you get your du, no problem, but you would wind up with this. And the thing of it is, is that that's not an integrable form. Now, what you could do is expand that if you wanted to, and then break it up into three integrals. And if you did that, you would get, you would get a, a, something that does work. Oh, no, wait, it's to the sixth. Oh, not to the second. I, missed, I misread it. Ooh, yeah, you would have that, and which would expand to be like seven term, which would suck. That's no fun. So instead, what we do is we put in the plus nine. There, so him. All right, round of applause when, when his audio kicks in. <laughs> All right. So um, with this in here, with the plus nine, it doesn't change my du. So now I've got a much simpler integral, uh, which is u to the sixth du, uh, which just integrates straight away as u to the seventh over seven plus c. And then I resub uh, my, uh, my u, nine plus the natural log of x. And put bars on it just to be safe. Seven and one seventh plus C. Okay, and that's how that one flies. Okay. Honestly, most of this stuff, knowing what to knowing how to do it, it's experience. It's it's an like I said in the very beginning, it's like this is an art form, guys. All right. It's it's crazy problem solving, like knowing what tool to use. Okay. Right. Number 53. All right, again, one that looks like it's got a U and a DU in it. So now this is U to the negative 2 DU, and that is an integrable form, it's a power rule. So I get u, and I add 1 to the exponent, and then I find the reciprocal, which is just negative 1, plus c, and then I resubstitute. I 
and you're done. I have a question because the way I did it was I left um, the U underneath, so it was one over U to the second, and then integrate, and then use the integrable form where it turns into the natural log of whatever's inside. Ooh, not true. Hold on. Why? Be Hold on. Oh, because of the uh... one second. One over x dx. This is the natural log of x plus yeah. t. One over x squared. Oh, it doesn't? Okay, I didn't know that. No, just because it's in the denominator doesn't mean that it's a natural log. Because remember, you rewrite this as a power. This is x to the negative 2. And then you just, when you integrate that, you get x to the negative 1 because you add 1 to the numerator, to the exponent, and you find your reciprocal. Now here, okay. here the deal is if I tried to treat this like a power rule, the problem is... If I add one of my exponent, I get x to the zeroth, and then I have the reciprocal of zero. Right? You see what I mean? Like, this is a problem. So, first of all, this is one, and that's undefined. So, we can't treat that as, um, as you can't treat this as a power rule. And that's why it's the natural log. Um, well, that's not why it's the natural log, but the natural because the derivative of the natural log is one over x. Okay, but yeah, yeah these are I, and I see kids do it all the time. Um, you know, they'll see this like for example. Now this is a natural log. One dx, and so now we've got one over u du which is the natural log of the absolute value of x plus one plus c. So that is a, um, a natural log, but the very similar looking that and then the even more similar looking okay and the even more similar looking You see what I mean? So like we've got all of these integrals that come out different. X yeah, plus one that turns into a natural log. This guy turns into him. That's an arc tangent. And this guy with one just added on to the top is something crazy, right? A little different. Okay. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like there are different techniques and it's sometimes hard to tell which one goes to what. But no one ever said calculus was easy. Okay, so the cotangent of 2x dx. Okay, now the thing about this guy is that none of my trig functions, when I tr when I take a derivative of them, just give me cotangent. Okay, there's none that just pop out that way, right? Um, you know, the derivative of secant is negative secant uh, cotangent. Uh, sorry, 
The derivative of cotangent is negative cotangent cosecant. And the derivative of, um, right, blah, 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 I said it wrong. Um, cotangent of x goes to uh, negative cosecant squared. And uh, cosecant of x goes to negative cosecant x cotangent of x. So nobody just by itself spits out cotangent. That's why you need to break them up into his pieces. Because cotangent um, is cosine over sine. And you see now I've got a function and its derivative. So if you used the u to be the cosine, well, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, but the, and the sine, the negative isn't a problem. But the deal is, is that your, your uh, u would be up top and it just wouldn't fly. Like it would look like this. This is wrong. The problem is, is that your sign is in your numerator, whereas this sign is in my denominator. And so I can't, I can't, I, I, I don't have this, you know, I don't have one over. And that's what I have here is one over sign. So I can't use it that way. So we try it the other way. Derivative of sine is cosine. And then the chain rule tells me I need a two. So now I have one over u du and And since the sign can be a negative, uh, a negative um, for half of it, half of the time that it's around, um, I have to put him in bars. Okay. How do we feel about fifty-four now? Okay. And fifty-five. All right, 55 had a lot of moving parts. And you see, I first I acknowledge that I've got a function and its derivative. So now I've got But again, none of my trig functions just spit out tangent when I take a derivative of them. So I break this guy up again. And tangent is sine over cosine. Did I miss any piece? No. Um, and so again, my, I'm going to use my cosine as my um, as my u but I've already used u, so I'm not gonna do it twice. That's why I pick a different variable. I need a negative sign to complete my, my du, that's a u. So I need a negative sign in order to make that work. And so now I've got and I get the natural log of the absolute value of V. And then I substitute V and I substitute U. And V was the cosine of U. And that's it. Um, how come you put uh, absolute value bars around the X? I thought they didn't have it before. Um, because when I, when I'm writing my final answer, 
I want to make sure that I'm not messing up my domain. And since we don't have a domain restriction on X, we haven't said that, you know, X is positive or X is greater than seven or whatever, then I can't assume that it's going to be greater than zero. So I put bars on it to make sure that it flies. So that actually, those are for the, that natural log. And then these are, I put a bar up, bars on those because cosine takes on positive and negative values too. So whenever there's something inside that could be negative, you always put bars on it. Okay. Are we cool? Okay. Who's completely and totally demoralized? Oh man, that means I've got work to do. Snap. Okay. Steven's like, dude, why are you doing this, man? <laughs> All right. All right. So what I want to do today is I want to bang on the drum of um, trig substitution a little bit more. Um, we had a little bit of headache on that one last time. So I'm going to do that again. All right, so the three ones that really come to play most often are uh, let me see this guy. Um, one all over and that's my arc sine of A over U or U over A. And then uh, and then this is u over a. And then finally the third one. So those are the three that pop up the most. And you can do some of the other trig reciprocals, sorry, uh, trig identities, but um, inverses, God, I can't speak. Um, but they produce different forms, um, not of these, but your things inside wind up being different, but they still graph out the same. Okay. Wait, do you in the last one? Oh uh, yeah, do you. There we go. Okay, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to just do some quick, fast, easy, simple, silly ones, okay? Keep this handy. All right, let's do, let's do some simple ones. Okay. So in this one, if we look at my three forms, okay, which one is it? top one yeah so in these cases a is my constant and u is my function okay or is actually the square root of whatever is in here okay so in this case my a is 2 and my u is just x so now I can basically consider it I can just jump right to my answer. This is the arc sine of u, which is x over two plus c, and we're done. Now, let me get this straight. Where am I? 
Okay, let's do another one. Now, the thing that tells me that it's, first of all, not a substitution, I'm sorry, not a, um, a U sub, is because if it was a U sub, I'd have to have an 18X or just an X somewhere, right? And I don't have that. So this is not a U sub. And I've got two things added down below, okay? So that tells me that I should be using which one of the three. the second one yeah the arc tangent now in this case my uh my i can rewrite this as right now in order to do this my u, I have to do a quick substitution. My u is 3x and my du is 3dx. So I need a 3 to get in here. And my a is this guy, right? And that just gives me one over three. And according to the formula, oh, did I skip a step? Snap, go back to your notes, I missed a piece. One over A. I forgot to write that one in there, my fault. Okay. Error number one. I was complaining to my wife yesterday about how many mistakes I made yesterday. Or uh, the other, actually yesterday. Oh my God, yesterday. I screw. I, I twisted HL1's brains, man. Oh, dude. Uh, if I, I think I made four mistakes in like 10 minutes. Like they didn't know which end was up. I mean, horrible, horrible. Ridiculous. Should not have been a teacher yesterday. Should have just put me out to pasture. All right, so now it's 3x all over the square root of 2 plus the c. Yeah. I appreciate that probably some people in this room told other people to take HL. Yeah, and you know what? You probably should have just put a little asterisk at the end of that statement and say, he screws up a lot. <laughs> what happened to the letters? Yeah, that's what I want to know, man. What happened to the letters? I got like two from HL2 last year. And they were like one-liners. They were so lame. It was just kind of like, do your homework, ask them questions. Make a group chat. It's lame, dude. Do you want us to resend the letters, or is it too late? Oh, if you if you want to write a letter to HL one, be my guest. Absolutely, I would love to send them letters. That would be awesome. Okay. <laughs> um. Now, let's do another one, just for giggles. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely do your notes in pencil when Ronco's giving them to you. That's a four. Okay. So before I go too far into this one, how about this? You, you probably guessed that it's going to be the arc secant. Okay, because it's the one I haven't done yet. And it's also the one that I've got a, a, a variable outside. 
Okay, so spend a few minutes trying to beat your head against this one. Figure out who your U is, do your U sub. Figure out who your A is, because you're going to need it. Okay? Why can't you just use a triangle? You can. But the fact of the matter is that half the people in this room hate the triangle. What? Yeah. The triangle is so useful. It's Come fun. On. I love the I love using the triangle. But not gonna lie, I forgot how to do that. Yeah, Burn the really. triangle. Triangle is awesome. Just we're trying not to worry about memorizing all this stuff. There's I like, know, right? Exactly. But then other people are like, dude, it's in my formula sheet. Just wait until we get to do hyperbolic functions, and then we don't have triangles. We have to do hyperbolas. It's crazier. It's fun. It's cool. Pardon me. So I hope we all got the right U and the right A. Okay. How do you get it to you? So you have the same U because there's the U on the outside of the square root, but there's the U on the inside. Don't they have to be the same? They do. In order for my, if my u is 2x, this guy out here has to be 2x. Putting a one half and then put a two on the outside? Yeah, or, or what you can, gosh, I'm so about to sneeze again. Um, think of it as You see, by putting two on both places, it's automatically, yeah. which is the same as putting a one half inside and a two outside, it works. And well, that's a three, right? That's a three. You look bored, Andrew. No, I'm just confused. Uh, where does the other U go, the one outside of the um, square root? It's part of the identity. If we go back to here, there's a U, and the, there's a U here and a U here. This is, again, one of the reasons why I like the triangle method, because you don't have to think about that. It just happens to go along with it, but it's part of the identity itself. Okay. Would it be um, two thirds times the arc secant because of the two from the outside? Oh, right. I forgot about that too. He's out here too. Oh, no, 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 no. Go back up in here. My U is 2X and my DU is 2DX. So I need that two to go with it.
So let's do some more. All right. La da 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 da. da, 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 da. Okay. So, is it a U sub? The problem is, is that if I do a U sub, the derivative of e to the 2x is 2e to the 2x. I don't have another e to the 2x anywhere. You know, so that means I can't do a U sub. I'm, I'm out of luck on that one. So, if I look at it this and I say I've got something, and if I look really carefully and I remember my exponential rules, this is something squared, right? Um, wait, that's wrong. Um, yeah, so actually I don't need, I, it's because it's not a use of. And now all of a sudden I have and okay and well yeah my du let's do this e to the x dx now i don't have the e to the x here now here's a crazy trick solve for dx and substitute. And by substituting du over u, That's kind of crazy, right? Now, what is that? Arpsecant? Yep. And um, it's my arc secant, but I, and my A is just one. So I have one over one. And it's the absolute value of u over one. And since u is e to the x, and e to the x is always positive, we're done. So would it be wrong if you left the absolute value? things on it? Um, well, the thing, it wouldn't be wrong per se. I mean, well, technically, you know, it's not 100% correct. But um, would I kill you and eat you? Maybe because it's in the formula. You know, like, if you're using the formula sheet, it's right there. If you were using a triangle, and you forgot it, I probably wouldn't kill you because I like the triangle and I want you to use the triangle and formulas are for wussies, but um, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> um, but the fact of the matter is, is that um, it's easy to forget. So I'm not gonna kill you and eat you over it. If it was an IB exam, I have seen an IB exams where they say, um, you know, uh, condone the absence of absolute value bars in the mark scheme. So, you know, they're not going to take off a lot of points or, but sometimes it's important, like, especially if you're having to graph it, for sure, it's important.
Okay. Okay. So now let's look at this a little differently. Let's try a different one. This is a nice technique as well. Okay, so, you know, I almost have a U sub. And let's just say, let's try a U sub and maybe we'll see where it goes. So let's just say U is equal to four minus X squared du is equal to negative 2x dx and I want to get rid of my x but the problem is is that I've got this x plus 2. You see I don't have a negative 2x right I've got an x I, even if I wanted to if I multiplied this by negative 2 and put a negative 1 half out here I would have negative 2x plus Oh, sorry, minus four x. That's oh, minus four, right? And the problem is that I I just can't get rid of this plus two. It just doesn't fly. So, one thing that you can consider doing is saying, well, you know what? Let me just break it up. You see, by breaking it up, I can use my U sub now. Because I can put a negative two out here. And you see now I do have a nice happy integral on this side. I mean, that's no big deal. That's just the power rule, right? And for this guy, I've got something for him. What's that? Arc sign. Yeah, that's my arc sign. And in that, in this case, my a is two and my u is x. So now I have. Um, there's still the two on the outside and I have the arc sine of X over two plus C for him. And this guy just becomes U to the one half times two. And we substitute and we get negative or let's just swap them around X squared minus four No, wait, I can't do that because it's in the square root. Um, this guy becomes negative one square root of four minus X squared. And then this guy. And you're done. Ryan's head's going to explode. Watch out. Christine's like, I got 174 four more school days of this crap. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. Dylan just quit. You can see his hand, threw his arms up and he said, forget it. Waiter, check, please. I'm done. <laughs> All right. Okay, all right, here's a fun one. Mark, tell your brother to be quiet. I saw my brother, but... Oh, you sure? Okay. That was the dog. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay.
Okay. So, what are some thoughts? Some first thoughts. How about this? Give me a bad idea. Move them all to the top. How the heck are you going to do that? X to the negative second power. You can't do that. They're adding terms. Somebody smack him. Ryan, you're standing next to him. Smack him. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that side. Here we go. Throw something at him. Ridvik, drop something on his head, will you please? Okay. <laughs> now, what's, so what, what is, what's a, a legitimate bad idea? Trying to do the quadratic formula. That's her. Ooh, yeah, quadratic formula. <laughs> Factoring that thing is not going to work very nicely at all, right? Okay. You know, a U sub, would a U sub work? No, there's no X on the top. Yeah, you know, if my, even if I tried it just for giggles, uh, you know, U is X squared minus 4X plus 7. This is wrong, so you don't even bother writing it. Uh, 2X minus 4 DX. You know, the pro again, I don't, I don't have an X minus 2 or a 2X minus 4 or anything like I don't have an X, right? I, I got nothing. So this isn't going to help me. But partial fractions. Um, partial fractions only work if I can factor it. Because if I can turn it into, you know, something over, you know, that times this, whatever the heck those are. Complete the square? Yeah, that's the only thing I can really do is complete the square. And then I add negative two squared. And moving the three over. And this was my Y. So now I've got And we're off to the races with what identity? Arctangent. Why arctangent? Because you have uh, an addition and a squared term, and then you can make it three squared. Yeah, uh, the A would be the square root of 3 squared. It's all about trying to fit it into the template. Go ahead and finish that guy up. How's that work out for everyone? Thumbs up, down, sideways. Okay, a little more practice. I keep forgetting, what time are we out of here? 240. Okay. Okay. Just for a second. I got to pause this recording. Okay. Thank you for that commercial break. 
All right. Um, now. Okay. Ooh, that's some ugly stuff. I don't even want to fool with that. Maybe I do. Okay. Let's do this. We did do definite integrals, didn't we? Ones with bounds on them? Yeah, but that was like forever ago. Aw, suckers. It's not bad. Okay. <laughs> this one's going to be fun. Okay. So, before we go too crazy deep into it, what are your first initial thoughts that it could maybe be? And don't say it's a pain in your butt or any other appropriate, inappropriate term. Remember, we got a school board member here. <laughs> arc sign. Okay, what makes you think it's an arc sign? It's got something square and something not, and there's nothing on the outside. Okay, those are all good. The no. only problem is that they're switched. Yeah, okay, so let's do this. Let's think about it like this. Let's write it, and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to ignore the bounds because I don't want to write them over and over again. Uh, but if we think about this as and then okay, so it's, it's, it's better looking, right? Now, the only way that this is really going to be worthwhile to me is if I get this X out of here, right? So let's think about it like this. Let's do, um, And you see now what's inside that parentheses becomes this. So I get a negative around the whole thing of that, which just swaps their positions. I mean, that's some crazy stuff right there. So here's one of the takeaway messages. When you have a polynomial that doesn't look friendly, consider completing the square, okay? To make it something small and squared and friendly, or at least friendlier. Okay, so we, we saw completing the square last time, and that spit out an arc, an arc tangent. But now when we complete the square this time, it's giving me an arc sine. Okay, so just the big takeaway thing is 
completing the square cleans up polynomials. Okay. Now, this is now my a squared. So a is three, ha three halves or three over two. And this is my u. And since my, D, my, my du is just dx, you see there's no worry right there. And now I've got And now I have the arc sine of u all over a. And there's no coefficient for an arc sine, but now I have to care about my bounds. And this can just be broken down into the arc sine of 2x over 3 minus 1. Nine fourths going in there turns it back into three halves. Three halves minus one is one half. And this just becomes the arc sine of zero. So what is the arc sine of one half? Uh, wait. What angle gives me a sign of yeah, one half? Uh, one, pi over six and five pi over six. Right. And what sign gives me an angle of zero? Oh, sorry, gives me a value of zero. Literally zero, right? Yeah, and that's your answer. So that one was a bit bigger. It had it, but again, the takeaway message: you have an ugly, pardon me, you have an ugly polynomial. Complete the square to make it something prettier. Okay, I think this might be our last one, because. All right. Okay. Ooh. Evil. Not evil, really. But it's not that So what do you think we can do? Split it. Complete the square. 
It's already a square, actually. That's not right. Because there's... Oh, no. I can't complete... No, it's not. It would have to be a 1, so I can't do that. So complete the square. And you wind up getting... Just to walk through that? Anyone want me to walk through that? Or are you comfy with it? Okay. Uh, equals the original. Whoops. So now we rewrite it. Now what? Split it up. Okay. We run, now this shouldn't be a problem. That looks to me like an arc tangent, right? But the thing of it is, is that this is not an arc tangent because I've got an X above it. So let's think about maybe doing this. Let's put it back. And if I do a U sub here, if this is my u, then my du would be 2x plus 2 dx. And the thing of it is, is that I don't have a 2x plus 2. I've just got a 2x. So there's a neat thing that we could do, because all I really need to do is add 2 to this numerator, right? But I can't just do that because I want to. Where can I get a plus two out of this? Or where can I put, how can I get that? I can steal it from somewhere. Where can I steal it? From the negative five. You can yes. just make it into a negative seven. Right. Neat. So if we treat this like going back up to the original, Uh, minus two, minus five. And you see now this guy becomes a, a negative seven. And now I've got what I need. And this is a straight U sub. And it becomes the natural log of x squared plus 2x. Oh, no, wait, I have to put bars on it because 2x could be negative. And there's our answer.
That's a that's kind of a cool trick. Okay. So um, I am sharing. Am I sharing my screen right now? No. Hold on. Let me give you. Here's your homework. These really aren't too bad. Like I on number 20, I gave it to you already as a completed square. Right? You say, aren't I a nice guy? No, I get it. I'm not. That's fine. So take a screenshot, please. All right, any other questions, issues, moans, whines, or concerns? All right, fantastic. Everyone have a fantastic weekend. Um, hopefully we'll have some better weather. It's been crappy out for days. So let's see if we can get some sun. All right, you guys, take it easy. And uh, if you have any questions, email me. Um, you know, I've got office hours right after this. Uh, so uh, if you need any help, just come and get it, okay? Have yourself a wonderful day.